Okay. All right. Now, today, we have got another special guest. We're on a roll with all our amazing special guests and all these incredible women at the moment. Um, and today, we've got Emma Kate with us. And Emma Kate is joining us, and she's a meditation and mindfulness therapist. And Emma has got an incredible story to share and some fantastic tips to share with us about joy and mindfulness. And she's got um, three little exercises that we can all do that she's going to share with us as well. And um, yeah, so I will hand it over to Emma to tell her story and introduce herself and a little bit of her background. And we'll just go from there. Hey, Emma. Hi, hey, thank you, first of all, to you, Andrea and Sarah, for having me along. It's a real privilege to be with you this morning. Um, I thought I'd just share a little bit of my background so you kind of know where I'm coming from. I'm 45 years old. I have three children that are 10, um, 11, oh, 12 now and 14. So I get the juggle of being a busy parent. Um, but really, I'm just going to start right back at the beginning. I was born in um, 1974 with a really rare heart condition called trichoteriosis. I was given a 1% chance um, of survival. I've had um, quite a number of open heart surgeries and other procedures. I grew up always thinking that I was going to die um, and not make it into the next year. Um, I was also led to believe that I would not be an adult, but definitely couldn't have any children. So I'm very much, if you tell me I can't do something, I will try and find a way. Um, but that has also led me to be really grateful for all the small things and to find joy in my life. Um, and it really is just about those simple things and having gratitude. And that has helped build my resilience. Um, going forward, when I was 39, I had quite a difficult um, separation from my ex-husband, um, and that left me a solo mum with three children and no income coming in, no job. So I very quickly, um, I was doing a little bit of massage at home, but not enough to support me, um, built a massage business. And that's how I earned my living. And then um, a year into that, I answered an ad on Facebook um, from a grad student doing his thesis and wanting to know if mindfulness and meditation, what impact that would have on trauma and anxiety. So I signed up, I did a 10 week course one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and during that, I discovered meditation and mindfulness and I had very high blood pressure. I was on a lot of heart medication. I was always tired. I had chronic pain. Um, so I wasn't in the best spot, but yet I was treating everybody else and nurturing everybody else, my clients, my children. Mm -hmm. um, and through this meditation, I just started to have life back again, joy. I slept really well. Um, I just found life a little bit easier. So I went to my cardiologist and said, look, I want to come off all my medication. They're like, you're crazy. You can't. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, we worked out a plan and consistently doing my meditation and mindfulness. I haven't been on any of my heart medications for the last five years. Um, and that is amazing to be with the heart condition I've got, um, to have no blood pressure, very little symptoms, um, and to be living a really joyful um, full life is really amazing. And I guess I should put a note that people at home shouldn't try that. I did work with my cardiologist and I did work with my GP and we came up with a plan to slowly wean myself off. So it was done in a very safe manner. I just want to, you know, yeah. acknowledge that. Okay. Um, so that's how my journey um, began. And then also my second child was born with a heart condition and he has had heart surgery. Um, and he has a lot of anxiety, um, post-traumatic stress, all the things that I had as a child. And so I had immense mother guilt around that. So I tried to give him therapy and help and we just couldn't get what we needed. So that was my moment of light bulbness where I was like, well, if I can't find the help, then I'm going to do it myself. Mm. So I went off and trained as a mindfulness teacher. And then I went off and did some work on positive um, new neuroplasticity, which helps you rewire the brain. Then I've done some trauma mindfulness work and now I'm doing some embody work. So that's a little background. Um, really, I live and breathe it. And so do my family, um, and I just think it's really important. So that's a little bit of my background. Um, 
So really what I wanted to talk to you about today was just finding that inner joy. Um, and I know it's maybe a little bit hard. We're all on self-isolation and um, we have this not knowing what is going to happen, what is happening, unfolding. All of our normal things have changed. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. But for me, it's given me the grace and space to really just grow personally and reset and slow down and look at what was working. Mm -hmm. And for me, it really is just going back to basics and finding those, those joyful moments and watching my children. They just naturally are more joyful than we do. You know, they get up and they play, they rough and pumble, they'll get up and they'll dance. They've lost that sense of judgment, you know. Mm. I can remember going on holidays and not wanting to hop in the swimming pool or the beach because I would look naff in my togs and what would everybody think? I lost so many of those magic moments. So for me, it's really just coming back and embracing, embracing that. So I'd really like everybody that's listening just to maybe take a moment pause think about what you did as a child what brought you joy was it dancing was it drawing was it baking with your grandmother just I think some of those messages are perhaps back in our childhood and if we tap back into those we might find some of those joy and I'm not saying to brush over the negative because we do have to sit with some of those and I know that now is uncomfortable but even if we can find joy like that first morning coffee. I love having my coffee and mm. sitting in bed. It's just, you know, brings me joy. Yeah. Or um, having a shower. I used to rush through my shower, trying to get the kids out the door, getting to work. And it was just like, how quickly can I get this done? I wasn't paying any attention. Mm -hmm. But if I slow down and have that shower, notice the water, how it feels in my body, you know, just slow everything down. And just take in those moments um, and you'll find joy in really ordinary places because I know some of us will find it hard to find joy and amongst our craziness of being a mum homeschooling and everything so if you just start practicing those little things you'll notice it slowly builds mm -hmm. um, and then you'll notice more and then you will just have those inner resources so when you have those hard days you have something to fall back onto, something to soften it, and those hard days become a little bit less and a little bit easier to manage. Does that make sense? Totally, yeah. It was interesting because I just did a, um, it's, it's, it's funny that you touched on this because I just did a, a Facebook post um, on this, uh, well, I thought it had posted yesterday, but I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> I did another one this morning on exactly the same thing. And I was listening, I was going for my walk yesterday and I was listening to a podcast and, um, and it was the first time I've listened to a podcast. You know, they talk about all things, all self care and they talk about, you know, food and water and move and, you know, like all the stuff that we all know, but it was the first, you know, sleep, it was the first time someone had actually mentioned that I have listened to personally on a podcast, fun mm -hmm. and joy and what you, exactly what you're talking about. And I thought, shit, oh, I hope Zoom puts that up. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, damn, <laughs> it. I, thought, damn I, I haven't, uh, that's the one thing that is missing. Like, <laughs> I, I, like at, at, at home, like, I don't know, when, you, when I'm around certain people, like certain friends or certain, you know, I can be a goose and be silly and have fun and be, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, I find, especially now, it's probably, it's probably the one thing that I'm not good at is, is that component of the self-care is um, having fun and joy and noticing the joyful things and all that kind of stuff. I never looked at it in that light. So that's really Gen interesting. Yeah, I think generally we feel yeah. guilty, you know, that we're goofing off, that we're taking time out. We've got this huge big list of getting through. So mm -hmm. you feel guilty when you go and step into that joy that you should be doing other things, which is really sad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really just coming back to that. And I have to acknowledge, I guess for me, I'm naturally one of those people that is grateful and finds joy. Um, and for me, it is easier and I get for some other people, it's a little bit harder to foster. Um, and so that's where my, my self-love and self-compassion, I've worked on that because as a mother, we always think that we're last on the list and that's how we've become. 
but I have learned through my trauma, being a mother, if I actually look after myself, like my journey of learning how to be mindful and meditate, that instantly had a rub off on my children. I was calmer, they became calmer. Mm -hmm. And that is where I really noticed um, the difference. Um, and when I really learned, I thought it was really selfish to put myself first. And um, it's really interesting. Unfortunately, my mother passed away earlier this year and I was her main carer. And that was one of the big lessons. She worked right up until she was 70. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, I just don't want that for you. I missed out on so much. She was so busy pleasing everybody else and filling out those expectations. So she thought that she would get to the end of her life and have this retirement. So she felt really ripped out that she had lost a lot of the joy by just giving to everybody else. She obviously got joy and she loved us and nurtured her, but she didn't do a lot of what made her heart sing. Mm. And I think that's my message. If we do a lot of what makes our heart sing, everything else just flows and becomes a lot easier. Our relationships, our work. Um, I'm incredibly blessed. I'm 45. I found myself at probably about 40. And I love my work. I love my clients. So I've worked hard at that, but I've worked on relationships with them. And so my life is really joyful. Mm. I've made some very tough decisions and I have got rid of or let go of some people that just don't bring me joy and mm. I know you can't do that all the time um yeah. you know but you can set safe boundaries around how you deal with those people yeah. um so really for me it's about cultivating what brings me joy what fulfills me um as much as I realistically can in the real world because I know that we all have other things coming in and out um so going back to that, I think a really simple practice for all of us to do, and it's really simple, is just to stop. If you can in the moment, just stop and um, take those three breaths and then just sit and observe how you're feeling. How does it make you feel? Do you feel uptight? Do you feel sad? Do you feel hot in your chest? All of those things, acknowledge it, say thank you to it, and then just let it go and carry on with the rest of your day. Um, we get into trouble, like I touched on before, we do have negative aspects. And if we just let them go and try and ride over them, they're just building up. And it's like that pressure, you know, waiting to explode. And we generally explode over something really little. So if you can, when you're meditating, I don't know if you have meditation practice, just sit there and acknowledge it. Yes, it can be uncomfortable. But if you can, just breathe through it. If you find it too hard, then obviously just stop and restart when you're more able. But it's just that idea if you um, acknowledge those feelings and then once you've acknowledged them, try and go back into something that is positive. Think about those people that you love or those people that care about you. So you've sat with those negative feelings, but then you've come back to that place of feeling cared about. Um, and that will just really help healing and help it not come back and haunt you or if it does it's a little bit less next time does that make sense yeah that's yeah. a really cool practice yeah so i also like the fact i also like the, the um i also love your story even though it's um well it's kind of the same topic but i love your story about how you've healed yourself because so many um so I, and naturally, and you've done it, you know, you've, done, you've healed yourself through your work that you've done on yourself. And cause, because so many people um, just go, will go to the doctor and they'll take the pill that the doctor prescribes them and they won't, you know, they don't, they don't think that they can be fixed. They think it's just like, it's like us when we deal with the woman, you know, going through menopause, a lot of them think that this is just the way it is and this is what happens and we're just meant to feel like rubbish but um you, you've you know living proof that you don't and you can heal yourself you've just got to put in the work yeah i went to my cardiologist because i'm 45 i've got premenopause and um going through all those symptoms when i've got a heart condition you get i already have the dizziness i already have hot flushes i already have the palpitations i already can get the anxiety if i forget to use my tools so i already have a lot of those symptoms that i've carried through my life and could possibly um get worse so I went to my cardiologist and said, you know, I don't really want to take medication. 
what do I do? I'm obviously doing my um, mindfulness. Do I need to be careful? And they just looked at me. They had no idea what I was talking about. I spoke to another woman cardiologist and she goes, oh, we just look at it globally. Um, and it really saddened me because there must be women in my position that not necessarily have been born with a heart condition, but might have a heart attack or suddenly they start getting the palpitations and they're really stressing out about it because they're not used to it. They don't know um, about mindfulness or breathing exercises. Mm. Um, so once again, you know, most will just go to the doctor and be given a pill and uh, my cardiologist is great now, but you know, they're getting used to me. I'm slowly introducing of trying to work holistically yeah. within the hospital. Um, so my point is that, you know, going through this stage can be really tough for all of us if we don't have those skills. Um, so I really love that you guys are helping and having those conversations. And I think just normalizing it and having those conversations. And even though I'm sitting here talking to you, I still have my moments. I'm still human. Sometimes I drop my tools, but I still, I remember to pick them up a lot quicker than the average person. Um, so, yeah, thank you for, you know, having these conversations. I think it's really important and really empowering. Um, and there is a real sense, especially in the mindfulness community, and hopefully it's coming out, that community, if we create a community of like-minded people where we can share what we're going through and we label some of the things, then that is a really powerful healing and releasing tool. Um, so I think it's really important. So that's partly why I really was really keen to come on here because I love that sharing and that sense of community. Mm. And we all have a story. Um, we might just have a slightly different version of that story. But as a woman, we're all going to go through this. Um, and my mother never spoke to me about it. You just, you didn't talk about it. So it's, I think it's really important that we talk about it. Yeah, and we have that self love and self compassion, and put our hands on our hearts and go, Yeah, okay, this is really tough. Yes, this sucks. Yes, I'm having this moment. Um, but just kind of sit and accept it um, for what it is, and then find help and connect or talk to like minded people that are able to help you. And that is really important. I think also your, your story showed too that a lot of us go through challenges, we go, we have maybe traumatic things that happen to us, or we get diagnosed with a condition or whatever. So, some of us have gone through terrible challenges, but actually when we look back, if it wasn't for those challenges, we wouldn't necessarily be on the path we are now. So there's an element of always, I know it sounds kind of, it sounds naff saying that you sometimes need to become grateful for those challenges because there's always a learning opportunity in that and it's those challenges that actually make us grow if we're willing to look for that and I think your story showed that you could have given up and you could have you know the fact that you're still alive now and doing so well is because you took those challenges and you grew from that. Hmm. Yeah, and I have to acknowledge that it hasn't always been easy, it hasn't always been comfortable um, but I don't regret my life. I have made some serious mistakes. I went to London when I was 20. I drank too much. I partied too much. All the things that were not good for my heart and my mental well-being. But if I hadn't had those lived experiences and I hadn't gone through the trauma of all my heart surgery and the miscarriages, the sick children, I heart broke with guilt over having a son that had to have heart surgery and having him on the operating table, all of those things, then I wouldn't be the woman I am now. I wouldn't have that inner strength to help guide my children. I wouldn't have the skills I have now to hopefully help other women um, and empower them and inspire them to rise up. Um, and yeah, so I think as long as we can learn from them, we're all going to make mistakes and we're going to continue to make mistakes. But if we can look at them compassionately, don't beat ourselves up, don't shame ourselves, but learn from them and try and come at it from a place of doing better next time, then I think that's a real gift. Yeah. So you talk about your tools. So what are you, do you want to tell us what your tools are? Uh, yeah, my tools, I've, I've sort of created what we call in the mindfulness world an inner set of resources. So they start, with, I have a mindfulness practice where I will sit. For me, actually, I'll go back slightly. Mindfulness to me is about being mindful, mindful and present 
um, and every moment and been aware. And I know realistically I don't do that. Um, but whenever I can, I will. So if I'm playing with my children, I'll try and put down my phone and I'll try and be engaged with them. If I'm having a conversation, I'll try and look at someone in the face and just be in that moment. It doesn't always happen, but that's my aim. And then when I go and sit down on my meditation cushion and I meditate, that's where I cement everything. That's where it comes in. And that is where I do a lot of my learning. I will sit with my feelings. Um, so I touched on very briefly that my mother um, passed away this year and I was her main carer. So some of that was obviously really challenging, really painful, but most of it was really amazing. Um, she just did it with such grace and dignity and it was such an honour for me to care for her because she was by my hospital bed my whole way through. She was my champion, always cheering me on and always telling me I could do that. So when I had those moments, part of that, I actually stepped away every single day and went down to the local beach and I sat and I meditated. And I used that time and during that meditation, I just filled myself up. So I do a lot of um, meditation practices. Some I just sit there and just breathe and just acknowledge what's coming in. Sometimes I'll purposely do ones that are about healing or about self-love or about connection, sending out loving feelings to um, the world, various things. So I have a whole various things. But my main thing I learned when I did a Rick Hansen course on positive neuroplasticity was taking in the good. So if I have a moment, um, like the other day, my son taught my daughter how to cook bacon, a very simple thing, but he taught her with such patience and it was lovely to see that bond because if anybody's got children, they know that siblings have their moments. Yeah. And that just kind of warmed my heart that they were getting on and he was teaching us something. And so I just really stepped back and acknowledged that moment and just breathed it in for three or four seconds. And that's part of my toolkit. So when something like that happens that um, I feel joy or excitement or love or, or anything positive, I will sit there and I'll try and cement that. So I'm building my resources because generally we just brush off the good things, but those negative things really hold tight. We can be given how many compliments and we give them one negative thing and how often do we stick to that one negative thing so what I'm trying to say is in your day it can be something really simple like my daughter bringing me a cup of coffee in the morning that's her way of showing her, me that she loves her, me so I just take that moment in and hold it so when I get those rough patches and the bumps that we all do I can try and sit back and remember some of those feelings of warmth and happiness and joy um, and then that makes me feel loved, even if no one else is around me or makes me feel cared. And that just softens those blows. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by my inner resources. I'm constantly just building them. Um, okay. Yeah. And so I think for everybody's different. For me, I meditate a lot. I get that we're busy and lots of people can't. So even if you can sit down and spend five minutes a day, you know, that is better than nothing. And don't sit on the mat expecting perfection. Mm. You know, it is good enough that you just sit down and take time for yourself. It doesn't have to be a big woohoo moment. It doesn't have yeah. to be 25 minutes and you come away feeling great. The fact that you sat down and practiced, you've told yourself that you care about yourself. You've done something for you. That is a really good starting place. That's a really good point because I know people that do meditate that um, meditation becomes stressful because they've got an idea of how it should be or an idea of how they should they should be and how they should feel and they don't feel that they either don't have the they think that their mind should be completely blank or that they should be able to meditate for three hours and then be an enlightened being and I think it's really important to remember that it's not like that. No, and everybody's different. Everybody has a story. And when I first learned to meditate, I learned in a very strict way. I had to do 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes at the day. And it was very strict, very regimented. When I first started talking about it, I felt superior because I was doing my 45 minutes and I lost the whole idea of it. Whereas now I've really softened and it's just about sitting in that moment with no expectations. Some days I'll do five minutes here, another 10 minutes there. Some days I'll do some big sessions. 
But what I'm trying to say is find your way, find what works for you. And just be aware that if you're new to it, you might sit there and you'll have all these thoughts and you'll think that you're going crazy because you're trying to meditate and you've been taught that meditation, you should have no thoughts. But why have you got more thoughts suddenly? That's really normal. Just mm -hmm. acknowledge you've got those thoughts and maybe just try and go back to your breath and just breathe. Um, and just take your practice and try and be joyful with it and be curious with it and make it your own because it's really about learning about your inner self. Yeah. It's not about anybody else. It's not about judgment. It's not about pleasing anybody else. It's not about anybody else's expectations. This is something that you can do for you. It's not about anything else. It's about you and finding that connection for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. And also the fact that we, we every day is different. So I know that sometimes I might meditate and I'm feeling really good. And then other times I can't even do two minutes because I'm just, all, and it's like yoga, sometimes you can hold a pose or, and, and then other times you lose your balance. And it's, I usually look at that and think, oh, that's reflecting what's going on. What What's going on with me that's making today a bit more difficult? What can I do about it? So it gives you an opportunity to, to be more mindful and be more aware of, of how you really feel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I just really want to take that pressure away that it should be, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. good. So um, with your, with your, um, your heart condition and when, with your healing yourself, did you just do that through, did you just do like one thing? Did you just do the mindfulness? Did you just, did you just do all the inner work or did you do other things? Did you have to do other things? Did you have to change your diet? Did you have to do anything else? Or was it just all the mindfulness that it you worked? It was mindfulness. I'm also, I don't diet. Um, I eat mindfully. So if I feel like a piece of chocolate, I will sit there and have a piece of dark chocolate, but I'll sit at the table or somewhere and all I do is have that piece. So I acknowledge it and then my cravings will go. Look, I'm not perfect. I love coffee. I had a version. I tried to give it up. I gave it up. But I actually realized that giving that up, I lost quite a lot of joy in that ritual, that first morning coffee. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. So for me, I try and be balanced. Um, I couldn't go out and suddenly decide to run. My heart won't cope with that. So I can go for a walk, run. I have to just slowly build up. And my yeah. massage practice is really good because I'm physically busy all the time. I'm moving. So I make sure I move throughout the day. I make sure I try and eat as healthy diet as I can, but I'm human and I will slip up and I like sweet things. So I give myself the space and grace to do that. Mm -hmm. So that when I do that, I've just done it and then I move on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just about having a lifestyle. A lot of it is, was figuring out what gave me anxiety, what stressed me out, because obviously that makes my heart condition worse. So it's the stepping mm -hmm. back. And a lot of the mindfulness came into that with dealing with my ex-husband. He could press my buttons like there was no tomorrow. Um, so I stepped back and one of the tools I did was actually I gave him one or two options for something, you know, like you do with the children, which you want to wear the red top or the blue top. So yeah. basically I'd give him options like that, but they're all exactly the same, but just worded differently. <laughs> and so he felt empowered, like he was having the choice instead of me. Um, and that really changed the dynamics um, and I do it with the kids too. So it was really changing my mindfulness. Well, sorry, becoming more mindfulness, meditating, watching what I ate, made sure I was moving and changed the way I converse with people. Yeah. Um, so it was really just looking at my whole world and working out what I could do to soften those impacts. Yeah. You, you were taking responsibility for yourself and your own communication and how you felt. And that's the thing that made the difference. Well, I will make someone else to fix you or sort you out it was like take a responsibility but then also showing love to yourself because it's a journey yeah, yeah. perfect yeah. that's perfect um and on that little note can i just share something i there's a very simple practice that some of you are going to go to screw your nose up and go, that's a bit naff, um, because it's really foreign to us. And um, during my um, self-retreat, I have read a lot of books because um, I love reading. Um, and one of them was called Good Morning, I Love You. And it was written by um, Dr. Um, Shauna Sapiro. And it just stuck such a chord with her. And I have asked her and I'm allowed to share this. Um, I have permission. And basically, the First thing I do when I wake up, I'm still in bed, I put my hand on my heart and say, good morning, I love you, Emma. 
And some people might find that really hard. So if you can't say good morning, I love you, say just good morning or good morning, I like you. And it's just such a lovely way to acknowledge that because with all my heart conditions, I've got all these scars, um, all this trauma. I didn't think I was worthy of being loved. So it took me a really long time to let someone in to love me, let alone me love myself. So it's a really beautiful practice. So I will start with good morning, Emma, I love you. And then I will lead on to everybody else that I love around me or what I'm feeling that day. And even those people that challenge me a little bit I will acknowledge them and say good morning I love you and it's just a really lovely mm. practice of self-love but also sending love back out um, to everybody and I think it's really important there is a lot of research showing that if you can show other people love and you send that out you actually end up feeling like you're loved back and I think that's a lot of what we're missing now. We've lost that connection. We're so busy. We're busy being mum, wife, business, that sometimes we don't feel that we're that loved ourselves. Mm. And we've lost that connection with our own bodies and minds. So just to come back, and it's, as I said, it's such a simple practice. I can do it in 30 yeah. seconds if I don't want to extend. Um, yeah. And it's something as women we just don't do, do we? No, we don't. We love everybody else. We definitely don't love ourselves very much sometimes. Yeah, and if you don't feel like saying I love you, don't say it because you don't you, you don't need to say something you don't believe. So just build up to it. If it's just good morning and then I like you, but you have to believe what you're saying. So some people might not be able to step straight into the I love you bit, but just even good morning to yourself is still a really lovely special gift that you can give yourself. That's beautiful. I love that. It's really nice. Thank you for sharing all these tips. Yeah, I just want things that are accessible. I don't want things to feel like you no. can't access them because we're busy. And I just really would love to empower women to um, just yeah. be mindfulness, more mindful about how they go about their day and look after themselves and treat themselves with that love and kindness. Mm -hmm. that you, you you know we all love our babies and our children we want to hold them and give them that love but we don't share that to ourselves do we mm -hmm. That's That's great. do you have any um more questions for her sarah on that no i just i love everything that you've said it's been yeah. really, um, really inspiring well thank yeah. you it's one really all. simple other breathing technique just on that and um so as you'll notice, most of my work is about breathing and about breathing in love and sharing love. Um, and to me, it took me a long time because I've had these heart surgeries. My ribs and um, breastbone have all been broken. So I was quite restricted in there. I found it really hard to breathe. So when I started doing all these breathing exercises centered around my heart, it was really quite emotional and really quite um, healing, but also quite confronting. So I just want to acknowledge that because I know that we've all had trauma, we've all had stories, we've all had grieving. So please, if you're doing these and you feel a little bit emotional, just sit with it and be kind to yourself. Um, now, having said that, I'll do a really simple one. So we talk about breathing and we're in the midst of it, you just need to take some simple deep breaths, even three. That's really simple, just slow, deep breaths. So that's a really simple practice. But if you want to open it up more, you can take that first breath and just really breathe into your body and notice that breath and your chest and everything just opening up. So that's a really simple first breath. Then the simple breath, as you breathe in, just think about someone you care about or someone you love and just send them those loving kindness and well-being thoughts. So you just send that out. And then on your third breath, as you breathe in, think about someone that loves or cares about you and just acknowledge that feeling without the story behind it or anything, but just feel that love that they have for you. And that practice is just really simple, but really centering and really anchoring. That's really nice. Very good. Very nice. It's really good when you're anxious and stressed or angry or grumpy. That's kind yeah. of really centered you. And what's so beautiful is you can expand on that, obviously. You can sit and meditate, but you can do that in your head and just take three breaths. And no one needs to know what you're doing. 
And that's the beauty of it. Hopefully what I've shared today are things that you can just carry with you um, and just keep building and keep building on. Um, but they're really accessible. You don't need any fancy tools, you know? Yeah. Everything is like, this is inside you. Tools. This is more tools to add to your toolbox, isn't it? Just all these things that we're learning, they're just adding to your toolbox. But they're yeah. already accessible. They're already within us and mm. we innately know them, but we have just forgotten to use them. Yeah. That's lovely. Okay. Well, where do people find you, Emma? Um, so probably the best place is just the, um, my website, www dot emma kate dot co nz and um i'll apologize a little for now it's in the process of being revamped um mm -hmm. before there was a really heavy presence on my massage and mindfulness but we're just repackaging and putting things um but also feel free to message me um if you have any questions um I'm about to post some uh, meditations up there. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching or group coaching around um, what we've spoken about today. Um, and I just really um, love to hear from you, especially if you found this um, useful um, or inspiring. I just, my hope is just to help others realize their potential and the beauty with inside themselves. You know, mm -hmm. we all have an inner beauty. We all have a story. Um, and we're also worthy of being loved. Mm. I love it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, That's exactly what I think. A lot of people need this to hear this uh, this week as well. <laughs> mm. so thank they you do. so much. Thank you. And it's so nice hearing it from other people as well. So everyone, everyone's kind of sending the same message. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's really lovely. And learning all these different tips and tools. Um, yeah, that's. Awesome. Right, people can pick what suits them as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, that's what's beautiful about now. I'll acknowledge that a lot of us are having a really hard time, you know, emotionally, financially, challenges within our relationship. But there's also some really positive time to give us some space and give us some grace to step into and refine our purpose and passion. And so I'm not trying to brush away the negative thing um, at mm. all but I'm really trying to focus on how I can move forward and nurture myself and empower others to do so yeah perfect yeah That's awesome. well thank you very much really appreciate you giving up your time and talking to us today oh, it's and been a real pleasure thank you I suspect a lot of people get a lot from what you've uh, you've shared and what you've talked so thank you well thank you very much Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Oh, we will. Hey, okay. thank you, Thanks, Emma. See you later. Bye-bye.